This is Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us today for Live with Annie. As usual, we've started the stream a bit early. This helps us get everything set up and broadcasting properly to our various platforms. You can find a countdown clock on the screen showing how long it will be until we actually go live. While you wait, please connect with us and other viewers in the chat. Let us know where you are from and whether you're a new or longtime viewer. We'll see you live soon. again for joining us for Live with Annie. We are so happy to have you with us today. While you wait for the program to start, we hope you'll enjoy the content playing on screen. There's so much inspiration, so take a moment to tell us what you love in the chat. Don't forget there is a countdown clock on the screen so you know how long until we go live.
It's Annie again reminding you that we'll be going live with this week's episode shortly. There is a countdown clock on the screen showing how much time is left. You've got just enough time to grab some water or a beverage of your choice and a snack and to connect with us in the chat. We'd love to hear what you've been working on this week. back to remind you that we'll be starting this week's live very shortly. We've got a really fun episode planned for today, and we'll see you soon. I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 36 of season 3 of Live with Annie. Today we are showcasing two new patterns, Payday and So Simple Wallets. Payday includes instructions for streamlined wallets in two sizes. They're extra easy to make since they don't involve any quilting and they have no bindings. And our So Simple Wallet pattern makes a handy wallet in three versions, one, two, or three pockets. You will love how quick and easy these are to make, and they are perfect for gifts. We will talk about all the features of these projects and share some tips for making your own, so stay tuned. I hope that all of you in the U.S. had a very enjoyable Thanksgiving with family and friends. I was so focused on getting to Norway that I totally forgot that Thanksgiving was coming when we pre-recorded last week's episode, but I didn't want to miss the chance today to say a huge thank you to all of you for your support, your enthusiasm, and your encouragement. We so appreciate every one of you. It's always a pleasure to see you here and to spend time together. And whether this is your first time joining us or you've seen all 136 episodes of Live with Annie, 
Thank you so much. If you enjoyed these episodes, please take a minute to follow us wherever you are watching. And if you know someone else who you think might enjoy the information that we share, we would really love it if you'd tell them about Live with Annie, too. Also, we love reading your comments, so please be sure to interact with us throughout this presentation. We want to know what you think, and we love learning from you, too. And be sure to add any questions you might have in the comments or chat, and we will do our best to answer them before we close. So last week, we showcased our newly updated pattern, Out to Lunch 2.0, and talked about its features. Out to Lunch 2.0 makes compact yet roomy bags in two sizes. They're perfect for carrying lunch or using as a purse, and each features a zip-around gusseted closure and a sturdy base. If you missed that episode or you want to watch it again, remember that you'll find all 136 episodes of Live with Annie on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or at byannie.com. I had a fabulous trip to Norway, so I thought I'd start today by sharing a few pictures from my trip. The retreat was organized by our good friends Catherine and Anna Malen at Catherine's Quiltstri in Oslo, Norway. It was held at a lovely hotel conference center in Klokken, Norway, which is about an hour and a half from Norway. The facilities were just wonderful. We even went for an outdoor swim on the last night of the retreat. It was awesome to watch the snow fall from the pool. The food was amazing, too. I thoroughly enjoyed the salmon, even at breakfast, lots of delicious salads, and amazing desserts. The classrooms were especially spacious and light-filled and had beautiful views of the countryside. It was just really a fabulous place to spend some time just before the holidays. Also teaching at the event was Gudrun Urla from GE Designs. Gudrun and I have been writing patterns. We began about the same time, and we have been friends for many years, but it was our first time to teach together at an, at an event such as this. I really enjoyed learning more about her innovative techniques for quickly and easily making modern quilts using traditional designs. We are already making plans to collaborate on some fun projects in the coming months, so keep your eyes open for that. I taught four classes and met so many wonderful people from Norway and Europe. Everyone was so kind, and they really made the trip extra special. I even met my Norwegian doppelganger at the retreat. Her name is Ingeborg, but they call her Annie as she looks so much like me. I had to agree, we could definitely be sisters. On Saturday evening, I presented a lecture and trunk show and shared a bit of the Biani story. Before my lecture, Catherine and her team had a really special surprise in store for me. They brought a special chair to the center of the stage, seated me, and then I was treated to a parade of Biani bags that attendees had made. Catherine talked about the happiness that Biani had provided everyone over the years and how much they'd all enjoyed making our patterns. It was so impressive to see all the beautiful bags that everyone has made, and I was truly touched and humbled by their display. It was obvious that everyone had been very well trained by Anna Mullen and Catherine in classes, too. So thank you to them for sharing our patterns and techniques throughout Norway. And thank you to everyone who joined us at the retreat and made the visit so very memorable. I can't wait to go back to visit again. All right, before we start, quick drink of water. So as I said earlier, today we are showcasing our last two new patterns for fall, Payday and So Simple Wallets. We're going to start with So Simple Wallet. This pattern sells for just $5 and includes instructions for a simple wallet in three versions. So you can make one with one pocket, you can make one with two pockets, or you can make one with three pockets. Plus, we filmed a video that walks you step by step through the entire process of making all three versions. We're going to start by playing the introduction video for the pattern to tell you all about it. Hi, I'm Annie with ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. I cannot wait to tell you about our pattern, So Simple Wallet. If you've ever struggled to securely contain credit cards and cash, you will love this handy wallet. 
Whether you're carrying a big duffel bag or a small crossbody bag, this simple wallet will organize money and more. Or if you prefer to travel light, a so simple wallet will hold your driver's license, credit card and a bit of cash and room key and will still fit easily into a pocket. The pattern includes instructions for a simple wallet in three versions, one pocket, two pocket, or three pocket. Use them to organize and carry cash, credit cards, loyalty cards, coupons, and more. Or tuck a gift card into a personalized wallet as a perfect gift for anyone on your list. Each wallet features a flap that folds over and closes easily with a hook and loop fastener. The name of this pattern says it all. This wallet is so simple. Whether you're making the one, the two, or the three pocket version, you'll need just one piece of fabric, one piece of interfacing, and a small piece of hook and loop tape. That makes cutting quick, and sewing is quick too, with just two seams and a bit of top stitching. And the pattern's ingenious design produces finished edges on all sides without any bindings. Use leftover fabrics from your most recent bag project to make a wallet to match your bag, big or small. The So Simple Wallet pattern includes step-by-step -step instructions to make this handy wallet in all three versions. We also filmed an add-on video that walks you step-by-step -step through the entire process. Ask for So Simple Wallet at your local quilt shop or find it at byani.com. You will love how quickly you can whip up this little wallet. It's perfect for using fabrics from your stash and great for gifts. We can't wait to see what you make, so be sure to share pictures of your finished projects with us. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the So Simple Wallet pattern. As you saw, these wallets are super easy to make and they are really great for anyone on your holiday gift list. You can put cash in them, credit cards, a gift card, and anyone will find them easy to fit in a pocket or any purse or bag. So if you choose fabrics to suit the recipient, they'll make a great gift for any man, woman, or child. They're a really classy way to present a gift card, and they're perfect for using fabrics from your stash. One five and a half inch strip of fabric will make a one pocket and a three pocket wallet or two two pocket wallets. And remember that we filmed that add-on video and it goes through every step of the process of making them. And included in the cup or in the pattern is the coupon so you get that video free. So you're paying $5 for the pattern, you're getting a $5 free pattern or free video, such a deal. One thing that I did want to mention before I move on, the pattern recommends that you don't use directional fabrics because we're usually cutting them across and most directional fabrics are printed that way. But if you have a particular directional fabric that you want to use, you can cut the pieces going this direction too. Just make sure that when you start to assemble them, you have the top of the design at the top of your fabric. And know too that what is at the top doesn't end up being this and because of the way it folds over, you're going to end up with a directional design upside down at some point on here. So that's the main reason why we don't recommend using directional fabrics, but um, you know, test that out if you have a particular fabric that is the one you, you need, you really want to use. All right, next we, I'm going to move these out of the way and then we are going to talk about payday. So as I said, payday includes instructions for streamlined wallets in two sizes. These are super easy to make too, and we're going to start by playing the an introduction and the closer look video for these, and then I'll be back to give you a closer look at some of them um, and to share some tips for cutting fabrics and assembling the bags. Hi, I'm Annie with ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. I can't wait to tell you about our pattern Payday, which includes instructions for streamlined wallets in two sizes. These stylish purses are extra easy to make since they involve no quilting and have no bindings. 
Each features a flap that folds over and closes easily with magnetic snaps. They have multiple pockets inside and out to make organization easy. You can use them to carry everything from money and credit cards to a phone or checkbook. Payday may be used as a wallet in a larger bag, or it may be carried on its own in a variety of ways, as a clutch, over the shoulder, crossbody, or around the waist. All these features and options make Payday the perfect bag to carry anywhere and everywhere. You or someone you love is sure to appreciate these versatile and stylish bags. I love to carry the small wallet when I'm shopping or running errands. There's just enough room for my shopping list, credit cards, cash, and checkbook, plus my phone, keys, and a few pins. I adjust the strap to wear crossbody so that my hands are free for carrying my purchases. The small bag is also the perfect size to carry the necessities when traveling. It will hold your ID, passport, boarding pass, glasses, phone, earbuds, and snacks for the plane. You'll love being able to wear it around the waist so that your hands are free and it may be securely hidden under a coat or jacket. If you're a person who wants to carry a little more, the large payday offers a bit more space and makes a great standalone purse. It's perfect for anyone who has a larger phone or wants to carry an e-reader. Headed out for a night on the town, payday in either size makes a perfect clutch to complement your outfit. We've even got a free wristlet strap pattern if you want a little extra security when carrying it as a clutch. There are so many ways to customize these bags, so choose fabrics and a size to suit your look and style, whatever the occasion. Whether you want something more subdued and classic, or something more colorful to match your favorite outfit, Payday is sure to please. The Payday pattern includes step-by-step -step instructions to make these professionally finished bags in both sizes. We also filmed an add-on video to help you with the more unique or challenging aspects of the pattern. Ask for Payday at your local quilt shop or find it at Biani.com. If you have more questions, be sure to watch the A Closer Look video, which gives more info about gathering supplies and customizing the project. Hi, I'm Annie with ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie, and I'd like to give you a little more information about our pattern, Payday. This pattern includes instructions for making streamlined wallet purses in two sizes. The majority of each bag is assembled while it is flat, and there is no quilting or binding involved, so construction is extra easy. The bag is made with an exterior and an interior, which are ingeniously joined in two steps to enclose all the raw edges. A flap folds over to close the interior of the bag and fastens with hidden magnets. The payday pattern recommends just two fabrics for each project. A main fabric, which is used for the exterior of the wallet, the back slip pocket, outer strap and carrying strap, as well as for the zippered pockets and slip pocket on the interior, and a lining fabric used for the interior of the wallet, the inner strap, the linings of the zippered pockets, and a multi-compartment pocketed unit for credit cards and cash. Of course, if you prefer to mix things up, add more fabrics, or even use just one fabric, you can certainly do that. Just know that you'll need to come up with your own cutting layouts and you may need different amounts of fabric than what is called for on the supply list. Because the fabrics we used for these wallets had such a geometric pattern, we were concerned about trying to line up all the patterns as we assembled the inner pocket unit on each. So, rather than using main fabric for all of the pockets there, we substituted the lining fabric for pocket B. That made life much easier as we cut and assembled the wallet. Directional fabrics will work fine for this project and the pattern includes tips for their use. Just know that you'll need to put some careful thought into cutting pieces if you are using fabrics with predominant motifs. Because of the way the bag is assembled, 
portions of many of the pieces may be covered partially or completely. As always, we recommend that you make at least one bag using non-directional designs before making a bag using your more precious fabrics. That way you'll have a better idea of how everything comes together and what you'll need to consider when cutting. We fussy cut a fun directional fabric from Tula Pink to make this large payday wallet. We centered the turtle on the front where it will show when the bag is closed. We also centered it on the back slip pocket. To conserve fabric, we positioned it offset on the top pocket on the inner pocket unit and didn't really worry about its placement on the slip pocket that forms the back of that unit, since it hardly shows. You will find a full list of supplies on the back cover of the payday pattern. If you don't yet have the pattern, you can also find the list on the payday product page at byani.com. Just click on the Supply List tab. You can achieve a variety of looks for payday just by varying the fabrics used. We made this set of payday bags just as the pattern directs, using just one fabric for the exterior of the bag, outer strap, and carrying strap. That gives a classy, subdued look that is sure to complement lots of outfits. We made this set of payday bags using a fun rainbow fabric. By fussy cutting the blue portions of the fabric for the large bag and the red portions for the small, we got two different looks. For this set, we used a fabric line with a predominant motif. For the small bag, we used two fabrics for the exterior body, fussy cutting the lion for the flap. We mixed in a variety of coordinating fabrics for the rest of the bag. For the large, we went with a more subdued look for the exterior and featured the elephant on the interior. Rather than try to match the design on the inner strap and to add some contrast, we used the main fabric for that part of the bag. In addition to the main and lining fabrics, we added a third fabric using a coordinating print with big dots for the linings of the pocket and the inner credit card pocket. Payday may also be made with heavier fabrics, such as canvas, cork, or faux leather. For this bag, we used a mid-weight canvas for both the main and lining fabrics. There was no need to add any interfacing on any of the pieces. For this wallet, we used canvas just for the main and a regular quilting weight fabric for the lining. We did add interfacing to all quilting weight fabric pieces. When using heavier fabrics, we recommend using quilting weight cottons for the lining as well as for pockets A and B. The Payday Wallet purse would make a great afternoon or weekend sewing project for confident beginners to more advanced makers. The project involves basic skills used in many Biani patterns. And to help ensure success, we filmed an add-on video. It will help you conceptualize the project and take you through the more challenging or unique parts of the pattern. The payday pattern is fun and surprisingly easy to make. You'll love using these wallet purses, small or large, and will appreciate the many ways that they can be carried. We can't wait to see what you make and how you use these versatile bags, so be sure to share pictures of your finished projects with us. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. I hope you enjoyed learning more about Payday and that you're excited to make your own. Just like Courtside, which we introduced earlier this month, Payday is a perfect project for featuring fabrics with predominant motifs. And as you can see, we used a lot of fun fabrics for the bags that we'd made, that we made. If you want more information about the fabrics that we used in the models that were shown in those videos, be sure to watch the very end of the A Closer Look video. Jake will put up the link so that you can get there easily. We're also showcasing a number of newer models today that weren't done when we made the videos, so be sure to check the info on the screen today too. For instance, here are two sets of payday that we made using fabrics from Tula Pink's upcoming line called Roar. As you can see, the fabrics in this line produced bags with two very different looks. So we fussy cut the fabrics for these to center the motifs on the bag. 
So on this one, I centered the little um, pterodactyl on the front, centered two of them on the back pocket, and then on the inside, we used a star fabric for the lining, and then we used a variety of fabrics for the pockets that make the inner pockets. On the large one, this is a great border print that's part of that line, and we fussy cut the border so that it would make the front of the flap. We used the more solid part for the bottom, and then we fussy cut that same print to make the back pocket. If you look underneath here, you'll see that 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 fabric is the middle piece of that fabric when it's printed, and we just used the borders for the outer pocket and the front. And then on the inside, again, we fussy cut the dinosaurs for the front pocket and used the darker part for all the rest. And then the main fabric that we'd use there became the lining on this bag. So that was a really fun one to make and very popular at, at um, Market and Festival in Houston this year. This is um, made using her Triceratops, and we centered him so that he would be on the front of the small one. I kind of think maybe I should have scooted him down just a little bit more so there wasn't so much of this, but that does give a nice border at the bottom. And then on the back, we um, fit him on the back pocket as well, and on the cent on this pocket. He's a little bigger than what these pieces came out to be, so if you're using a fabric like that, you kind of have to decide which parts you want to show. We put in a plain fabric for the middle pocket there, which is that pocket B, and the strap so that we didn't have to worry about trying to match designs all the way through. It's always nice if you can use the main fabric at least here and here so that when you look at the bag from the side, it all blends in together. But we don't do that all the time, and you'll You'll see some places where we didn't do that here. On this one, we this is the pterodactyl. The other one is a raptor, velociraptor. I don't know my dinosaurs as well as Tula, obviously. So we fussy cut different designs for this one and then mixed in a, a gray stars for the inside and again brought that purple in for the inner strap, the pocket B, and the carrying strap for this bag. So those were really, really fun to make and a great use of Tula's new line, Roar. Payday can also be made with heavier fabrics, such as cork or canvas, which we showed a little bit of in the video. I thought I'd just talk a little bit more about that. So for this small payday, we used some canvas from our friends at Sew Boutique, um, Bruce and Diane. And so we used that for the main fabric on the outside of the bag. We also used it for the strap on the back the carrying strap, and then the pockets on the inside. So using that for the same fabric all the way around, again, gives you a really cohesive look. But to reduce bulk, we used regular quilting weight fabric for the lining pieces and the pocket lining. It's actually on this one, I don't think we did. This one, we used canvas all the way around. So on this one, since we used canvas all the way around, we were able to skip the interfacings. We didn't need that on here at all. So. This one I've got packed, ready to go, so I've got my coins and my lipstick down in this bottom pocket. I've got my cash in the middle pocket, the little slip pocket that's in between that and the back. I've got a little notepad and a pen, and then I've got my checkbook, lots of credit cards and health cards. My phone will fit in there, and I can still zip that or snap that shut. I've also got my car keys in the back which if I wanted, I'd probably rather keep them in this pocket. I can slide those in that pocket and um, close the bag and, and I'm off to go. So on this bag, I used cork. And we thought it would be too bulky to use cork for the bottom pockets on the inside as well as the outside. So we found a um, coordinating fabric that we used on the inside. And we used the cork just for the exterior of the bag, the outer strap, the carrying strap, which is stuck down in here, and for pocket E, which is the slip pocket on the back. We did fold it over just as the pattern directs so that it's a double piece of fabric. And then, um, so we didn't add, um, cotton fabric in there. I have seen people do that, but on this one we just did the, the double um, cork on that. And then on the inside, we did everything else from quilting weight cotton. So we used a lighter color fabric for the interior of the bag, 
and also to line the pockets. You can see there. And then we used a dark color color that kind of matched the outside for the bottom pockets and the inner strap. Also, rather than making tubes for the straps and the carrying strap, um, which would be hard to do with cork, we just folded the cork to make those. So we cut the fabric two inches wide. We wanted them to end up being one inch. On the wrong side of that, we marked a vertical line all the way down the strip in the center. And then we just folded the outer edges into that line. We used a little strip of Biani basting tape to hold those edges down. And then we top stitched an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around. On the inside to cover the um, raw edges where they came together, we sewed some grain ribbon over to cover that. And that makes a really nice sturdy strap um, that's easy to do when you're using cork. So payday is a really easy project to make. As I said earlier, you're going to really love that there isn't any quilting. There's not an inch of binding anywhere on the whole project. So if you're a person who doesn't like binding, this is the perfect project for you. And the add-on video for the project covers any of the more unique or challenging parts. So this would make a great afternoon or weekend sewing project for confident beginners to more advanced makers. Um, I taught this as a class in Norway. We had a six hour class and quite a few people um, finished the bag during class. So it's a really perfect project for Christmas sewing if you get started soon. I thought that I would take just a few minutes since I have step outs from the class I um, taught in Norway and show you a few of the steps um, and show you kind of how things um, go together. So like any um, by any bag, the first thing you're going to do is prepare the components. And in this case, that means preparing the zippers, the straps, the handles, or the carrying strap, the inner and outer strap. I'm not going to cover those because um, those are pretty generic. And if you need help, just watch our carrying strap and pad um, video. But then your next step will be to fuse interfacings in place. And on this project, you're fusing interfacing to both the lining and the exterior fabric, so the interior and the exterior, and then to some of your pockets. So you've got two pockets that are really super easy to make. You just take one big piece of fabric, you fuse a piece of interfacing to it, you fold it in half, and you top stitch along the top edge. So that this is the pocket that goes on the back, and this is the pocket that becomes this part right here. So those are super simple and easy to do. Once you have those done, your next step is to prepare the little credit card pocket that goes on the inside underneath. Um, let me grab one here. So there's a credit card pocket that goes right here underneath. On the small wallet, it's wide enough for one set of cards. On the large wallet, because it's wider, it's twice as wide. So you've got room for twice as many cards. And um, just like So Simple Wallet, it's made just with one piece of fabric, one piece of interfacing. You mark some lines, you fold on those lines, you do a little top stitching to form the pockets, you bring your raw edges together, you stitch along the sides, and then you turn it right side out. I thought I'd show you how to do that because I got an email yesterday from someone who was having a hard time doing it and she figured it out. but. Let me show you this. So when you do this, you've got several layers here. The first thing that you want to do is reach in between the two raw edges. So just hold this raw edge in one hand and everything else with that raw edge in the other hand. And then you're going to turn that right side out. And you'll push out the corners really well and give it a little pressing. Then you're going to reach in and you're going to grab these two pockets you're going to grab the folded edge over here, and you're going to turn that part. And when you get that done, you've got your, your two pockets here, and this, when it's sewn to the bag, forms another pocket in the back. So super easy to do, and that's how you make the credit card pocket, which is pocket D. I am actually going to put this stuff away as I go so I don't have a huge mess when I'm done. We'll see how well that works. But. All right, the next thing you're going to do is prepare pocket A, which is this one. 
and that is this little pocket right here. So this is pocket A, B, C, this is D, this is E. So they're in alphabetical order how they appear on the pocket. So the first thing you'll do is you'll take the lining of pocket A, you'll fuse some interfacing to it, you want to make sure you mark where the top is because your magnets are closer to one edge than the other and you want to make sure you have them in the right place so they line up when you go to close your bag. So you'll mark some lines for placement of the magnets and then pay attention to what the pattern tells you so you make sure you have the magnets positioned properly. But in this case you've got the doctor logo side down, the smooth side up, and you're going to center them between those boxes you made. I like to sew about an eighth of an inch from the edge of that. Then I take my little magnet cover, put it on top of that, and then I sew a little bit closer, about a quarter inch from the edge, so I'm sewing close to the magnet. That's going to mean that if ever that vinyl sleeve gets compromised, your magnet's going to stay in place and it's not going to fall down to the bottom of your pocket. So don't skip that step. That's really important. So that gets your magnet sewn in place. Then you're going to take your main fabric. So let's say this is done and ready to go. You're going to take your main fabric, put it on there, and sew them together an eighth of an inch from that upper edge. And then you're going to attach your zipper to it. And we're doing it much the way we um, do a regular zipper. We've got right sides together. I would have my zipper slide out here. So I've got a nice straight shot. You'll let your zipper tape overhang the edge of that fabric by about an eighth of an inch. You'll sew that with a generous quarter inch seam, stitching from the zipper side, and then you'll finger press your zipper tape down against your pocket and stitch along the very edge. As you do that, you want to make sure that all of your raw edges are pushed up underneath there so that you don't have any raw edges showing on the outside. And then you've got your zipper attached to your pocket. The last thing that you're going to do is attach an extension to this pocket because pocket B is one wide piece that wraps all the way around and we need this one to wrap around too so that we can cover the raw edges of our zipper over here. So you've got a piece that's called the extension. You just lay it on top of your zippered pocket. They should be the same height. Sew that with a seam, press it over, and pocket B is ready to go. All right. I mean pocket A. That was pocket A, not pocket B. All right, next we're going to talk about pocket B. And this is another easy step. So the first thing you're going to do on this is take your main fabric. I ran out of my flowered fabric, so we've got a different fabric here, but you'll see a variety of fabrics in these step outs. So you're going to take your main fabric, put it on your piece of soft and stable that's the same size, and sew along the edges of that. Then you're going to attach your zipper to this. In this case, your zipper doesn't have to extend beyond because our lining is going to cover the raw edges. So just get your edges even, sew from end to end, and you want to have about the same amount of zipper tape hanging off on each end. You're going to notice that I have a little bit more here, but that's because I've got just the fabric part, but um, try and make it fairly even on the sides. Once you've got that done, then you'll lay your lining on top of that and you will stitch across that edge to join those. And then you will fold your lining up and press it and you'll do some understitching. So the purpose of understitching is so that this lining falls back under the pocket. And what you're going to do is just put this out on your sewing machine table and you're going to make sure that the zipper and the seam on the lining side are under there and then you're going to sew about an eighth of an inch all the way from one side to the other. What that's going to do again is make your your lining go back to the back and be hidden much more easily. After you've got that done then you'll fold your lining back down, you'll press it really good. It should be shorter than this, so that's right if you see soft and stable showing at the bottom. And then you're just going to top stitch quarter inch from the top and then mark some lines on here. So the purpose of those lines is so that you can attach pocket A to that. And that's what I'm going to show you next. 
So for all of the steps in the next thing, you want to make sure that you take that lining and you open it out so you're not catching it in place. So let's say we've got this piece. We're going to take our lining, separate it out there, and then we're going to take our pocket A that we made, and we're going to put it face down on top of this, and we are just going to stitch from one side to the other all the way across. We'll stitch right along the very bottom too, so when you sew that, that zipper, you're going to do a quarter inch from the seam and then right along the edge too, because when you open that pocket, you're going to see that in there and you don't want that to, to lift up and, and get wonky. So sew that, bring this down, and then you're ready to attach your zipper slide to this and um, finish this pocket. That is included in the video, so I'm not going to go through all of that, um, but actually let me see what I have here. So much for my plan to put it all away as I go. <laughs> well, that's, so then once you get that done, you'll, you'll put your zipper pull on there. Oh, then you're going to mark some lines on your pocket, which is your, your back pocket. You're going to have some lines marked on here, and you're going to mark a line on there, and you're going to stitch those together. That's how you get this pocket attached to the other pocket. Then you'll put your zipper pull on, you'll sew your side seam, you'll sew all the way around the bottom, and when you're done, you'll have that inner pocket ready to go. One thing that we did on this, a lot of times we will round corners, and then we'll stitch an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch from that, to stitch around. On this, we wanted to make sure that these corners were really accurate and the same on everything. So rather than have you round the corners and then stitch a quarter inch away, we stitch straight lines. We mark where the, cor where the lines need to be stitched. We mark the rounded lines and then you restitch on the lines. So by stitching right on the lines, you're going to get really accurate curves going all the way around your bag. So that's got all your pockets ready to go, and then you're going to be ready to prepare the front and back of the bag. So we are going to start with the body main, which is your main fabric. So the first thing you're going to do is take your, your piece of soft and stable, which is the stabilizer. It's cut to the same size as the fabric for the outside. You're going to mark lines as directed, stitch your magnets in place, and then this is a really important step. After you have those magnets stitched in place, it tells you to position those so that the magnets are underneath at the bottom before you attach your main fabric. If you miss that step and you attach it like this, those magnets end up with the side that needs to connect out here rather than under here, and your magnets won't hold. So if you're a person who sewed this all together and your magnets weren't strong, it's possible that that's what happened there. So make sure that piece has the magnets underneath. Put your main fabric on. You're going to sew all the way around the outside to join that. Then you're going to attach your outer strap and your back pocket. And when you're done, you'll have what looks like this, which forms the outside of your bag. Then it's going to tell you to flip it over and mark a line up from the bottom. So pay attention and mark that accurately because that's the line that's going to be used when you join the front and the back together. So that's the outside of the bag. And for the inside, we've got, we're again marking some lines on it, which is here. After you have those lines marked, you're going to attach your inner strap then you're going to attach your pocket, and that's a really easy one. Not a whole lot to do on that one. All right, once that's done, these magnets really like to stick to each other. Then you're ready to put the whole thing together, and what did I do with that piece? bottom. So as we said in the um, intro video, this is done in two steps. So the first step you're going to do 
is put your main and your lining together or your exterior and your interior is what they're called in this pattern. Put those together, making sure you're positioning them um, it, right. So this, you start with the credit pocket, card pocket at the top upside down. You put that together, the magnets at the bottom, and then that line that we marked on the back, you're going to stitch all the way around. The pattern will explain that to you, and again, you're going to mark lines that you're stitching on. You're going to trim the bulk around there, and you're going to make little clips here and here so that when you turn this right side out, I don't have those clips done, um, but you can see what it's going to look like. When you turn this right side out, you've got the flap of your bag ready to go. You'll give that a really good pressing, make sure everything's pressed out. You'll join these, sew those together, and then you'll take that inner pocket unit that we made, put that together, pin it really well to hold those together. You'll stitch around that, and then that will turn right side out, so all your seams will be hidden underneath, and um, your bag will be all put together. You'll do some top stitching, which again is covered in the video, and your payday wallet is finished. So super fun to make, not a hard project to do. Just make sure you follow the pattern, check off the steps as you go so you don't miss anything, and do it in order, and, and you'll have a great little wallet for a gift or for yourself ready to go. All right, before we close, I want to show you how Payday compares to some other By Any Person wallet patterns. Um, so if you're trying to decide if this is the one you want to make, you can see how the size compares. I need a quick drink. So this is our pattern called Folding Wallet, which we have not um, featured a whole lot. It's an older pattern. You can see it's significantly smaller than Payday. And this was um, written many years ago, before cell phones even existed. So it does have a pocket on the back that closes with Velcro. Um, you could put a smaller phone in there, but the Velcro is not going to fasten. So if you want to put a phone in there, I would recommend just leaving the Velcro off so that you don't scratch your phone. But you've got the ability to put a phone in there. And then it opens, and you've got a place at the top for your ID or your driver's license. You've got a handle that you can wear the, body, the bag crossbody. You can pull up on it and carry it as a handbag, or these handles attach with little hook and eye um, fasteners here. You can take it off completely and just put it in your bag without a, the strap at all. There's a pocket here, which is perfect for your coins. Um, credit card pockets here, enough for six or more. More credit card pockets here, a place to put a pen, and then room at the bottom, um, say for your checkbook, or you could put your phone down there too. So it folds up, fastens with a piece of Velcro, and that makes a really handy um, small little wallet, but quite a bit difference in size than Payday. And if you are going to make this, this is one of our older patterns. It doesn't have our newest layout and design. Um, I did the illustrations in it, so they're not terrifically well done. We did film a video for this um, that if you click on the Tutorials tab, you'll find it's called Make a Folding Wallet. It goes step by step through the whole process. It's the very first video I ever filmed. I look like I'm a million years old. We didn't know anything about lighting and sound, um, so it's not the best video. It's certainly not our current quality, but if you need help making this, it's helpful for that. So that is um, Payday, and I'm going to take my checkbook out of there before I forget and leave it in there. I mean, that's Folding Wallet. All right, the other um, bag that is a bit similar is our pattern called Snapshot, which includes two sizes. You can see it's larger. The small is larger than the small payday. Um, the large also is larger. If you've got quite a few things to carry, this is a great bag because not only can you fit lots in the bottom, but if you have something big, you can even open it up and carry it that way. So if, you've, if you're a person who carries more than just the basics, um, this might be a good size for you. And then the other one that's fairly similar to this is our um, night and day purse. The tote is quite a bit different. I'll get it out. 
but the night and day purse. So if you look at the size of that, it's a little bit bigger. It's got two compartments, so um, you can put a lot more in here. And then in the middle between the two compartments is a great place to put your phone. So this is the bag that I usually carry every day. I can tell you it holds a ton more than payday does, but really, how much of that do I need? Um, most of it I never ever access. So to me, payday is the perfect for carrying the essentials with me for a day out on the town. So again, that is payday, night and day, snapshot and folding wallet. Hope that's helpful to you. Let's see if anybody had questions. Okay, one question, is there RFID interfacing that can be used for the wallets? That's a question that I get fairly regularly and I actually have some RFID fabric that I had bought and ages ago thinking that I would put it in a wallet. But when I did research into it, I found that if you sew through that, the, the purpose of RFID is radio frequency wave, trying to stop somebody from being able to scan your credit card through your wallet. And so this is a fabric that prevents that from happening. But if you sew through it, the waves can go through where the holes were where you sewed. So to me, that totally defeated the purpose. It's not cheap. I paid probably $60 a yard. I didn't buy a great big piece, but it was not inexpensive. And the things that I have read said that's kind of a scam, that really you don't need it, that there has never been an instance of anybody having that happen to their things. There's a lot more important things to worry about. So truthfully, I haven't, I haven't used it. Could you put it in there? Probably, so you could probably put it between the pockets, maybe lay it um, on top of the soft and stable when you fold the interfacing down, maybe use some basting tape to hold it in place so that you aren't sewing through it. Uh, but I'm not sure that it's a necessary thing. So, so that's, that's my input on that. And where did I find this beautiful cork? I actually bought this from E.E. E. Shank, who is a distributor in Portland, Oregon quite a long time ago actually. I've had this for several years and we've about used all of it up now, but it really is a beautiful color and a beautiful design. So there's lots and lots of cork out there. Um, so check around at your local stores and see if they've got some for you. All right, so I hope you enjoyed learning more about So Simple Wallet and Payday. I can't wait to see what you make. So be sure to share photos of your finished projects with us. Don't forget to enter our monthly photo contest because you can win up to 50 bucks and we give several prizes every month. And you'll get all the details at our website just by clicking on the photo contest slash gallery link on the top menu bar. I gotta have another drink. And then as always, please ask for these patterns and supplies at your local quilt shop. They are such an important part of our sewing and quilting communities. It's up to all of us to keep them strong and vibrant. And remember, if they don't have these in stock, they can certainly get them either from their favorite distributor or from us. And we're happy to set up wholesale accounts for qualified stores, so just ask them to contact us for more information. The end of the year is coming, and we wanted to let you know that our office and warehouse will be closed the last week in December so that we can give our team a much deserved and needed break. So our last day to fill orders in 2023 will be Friday, December 22nd. Any orders placed after that date will be held until we return on January 2nd. Our website will be available so you can access your digital library, you can place any orders, and we will be excited to fill those when we get back to work on Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. Hard to believe it's almost a new year already. All right, let's move on now to our featured local quilt shop of the week. At Biani, we are all about supporting local quilt shops, and one of our favorite events is our local quilt shop contest that we hold each year in February. During the contest, we encourage sewists to vote for their favorite quilt shop and share a little bit about what makes them special, and then to continue the fun and support throughout the year, each week we highlight a store or more in some of their voter submissions during Live with Annie. So this week we are starting in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada at Periwinkle Quilting and Beyond, who was the LQS regional winner for that province. Periwinkle is owned and operated by Patty Erickson Reynolds.
Patty has been quilting for 23 years and says it all started with one sewing class when her children were young. She worked as a sales clerk at Periwinkle for 12 years before taking the leap and buying the shop six years ago. In addition to loving all things quilting, Patty is an avid horsewoman who's ridden most of her life. She has a small farm and rides with her husband, Byron, who is also a horse nut. Periwinkle Quilting and Beyond was born in August of 2001 with owner Michelle Harris. It began in a small shop in Cumberland Square. Many quilting adventures and years later, Michelle retired, and on January 1st, 2017, Patty took over ownership and operations. The store is a full-service brick-and-mortar shop as well as an online quilt shop. They offer a huge selection of quilting fabrics, books, patterns, notions, and classes. Patty says, we love backmagging, and we carry fabrics, patterns, and hardware specific to bags. As well, we like to have special guest teachers, speakers, and events. The shop blends both traditional and modern aesthetic to offer our customers the widest selection. We're focused on being a helpful, knowledgeable, and fun shop to visit. Periwinkle offers mainly cotton quilting fabrics, canvas and cork for bags, and we dabble in fabrics for garment making. We have a large inventory of notions and bag making supplies. And we are pleased to be a Bernina dealer and offer sales of Bernina sewing machines, sergers, and long arm machines. We also offer sales of Juki sewing machines and sergers as well. We are pleased to offer sewing machine repair and service of all models too. Periwinkle Quilting and Beyond is pleased to offer classes year round. You can pick up a class newsletter in store or hop online to periwinkle.biz and click on the classes tab to see what's upcoming. Customers can also sign up for our newsletter, which is always short and informative on our website as well to keep on top of events and new products. Customers who voted for Periwinkle Quilting and Beyond in this year's contest praised the store's service, staff, and selection. Carrie said, Periwinkle Quilting and Beyond has incredible customer service and beautiful fabrics. The staff are incredibly helpful and always come up with many fabric options to blend, complement, or add zip to my quilt project. Sherry added, so many, many fabrics for all tastes. The latest in trends, oodles of bolts, great pattern selection, and lovely samples. Staff are so friendly and machine sales and repair as well. This is a very nurturing place with a rewards program to boot. Daily emails from Patty about the latest thing and a joke every Sunday morning tops off their wonderful service. And Nadia said they go above and beyond to help customers. They always have gorgeous new fabrics and their classes are so fun. When asked about the impact of the local quilt shop contest on their store, Patty said, the contest has been so much fun for us. It was lovely to read the comments voters left. We have the best customers. We've had lots of customers coming to see the Biani trunk show and congratulate us on being voted the favorite quilt shop in Saskatchewan. We loved our prices, and being able to talk about the Biani patterns to our customers has been great. We've sold many patterns, fabrics, and supplies. I really enjoyed hearing that and learning more about Periwinkle Quilting and thank them for their support. I would really love to visit there one day. Next, we are traveling all the way to New Zealand to visit the Apple Basket Patchwork Shop in Kaiwaka. They are the winner for the country of New Zealand in this year's contest. Owner Nagari Williams says that she has always been very creative and started out making her doll's clothes when she was eight years old. She loves to create new quilts and small projects and showcases them in her store along with the patterns and kits. She has always had a passion for textiles and has always sewn her own clothes and then her children's clothes too. She started quilting 30 years ago and has never looked back. So the Apple Basket has been in business for 25 years, and it's run out of a 100-year-old farmhouse with a separate classroom on the property. It's situated in the small town of Kaiwaka, which is about an hour and a half north of Auckland. Products include fabrics, Foff sewing machines, embroidery threads both hand and machine, classes, patterns, and all notions relating to quilting and bag making. 
Customers who voted for the Apple Basket in this year's contest praised the store's staff, selection, and inspiring atmosphere. Kelly wrote, The staff take the time to talk to you about your project and provide advice and helpful options when you are stuck. They have a beautiful range of fabrics. And Julie said there are always beautiful handmade items on display, which I find so inspirational. This shop is all, also the only one that I know of within 100 kilometers of where I live that stocks by any products. It's so nice to go along and browse in person rather than online. When asked about the impact of the contest on the store, the Apple Basket said, We have a lot of people now interested in purchasing by any patterns and all that goes with the bags, soft and stable, zippers, mesh, hardware, and more. I am really happy to hear that the Apple Basket is stocking by any supplies, and I wish Nagari and everyone there much success. Thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We are going to be back next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with an extra fun episode of Live with Annie. As we discussed today, Payday makes a great clutch, and it's always nice to have a wristlet strap for extra security when carrying a bag that way. So since next week's episode will be our last Live with Annie for this year, we thought it would be fun to end the year with a sew along for our free wristlet strap pattern. This pattern includes instructions for handy straps in two versions. So you can do flat or folded, and they can be attached to a clutch or a bag, or you can use them independently to hold a ring of keys or other items. This is a downloadable pattern, so go to byani.com and download it soon. And once you have the pattern, Gather the supplies that are listed in the pattern and then just follow the cutting instructions in step one to cut the fabric and interfacing for the strap of your choice. It's not much to cut. It's only going to take you a few minutes. Then join us next Wednesday, December 6th to make the wristlet strap in either version or both during Live with Annie. Again, they are quick and easy to make and they would make a great last minute gift for anyone on your list. Until then, happy stitching!